So the question, how are your feet? <laughs> Don't worry, uh, yeah, painful. painful. My feet, you don't really want to see my feet. My physical feet are not very attractive. There is somebody here who can make your physical feet nice and tidy and clean and well again. That's Jean at the back there. No charge for that uh, um, little advertisement. It's all absolutely free. We are the free church after all. So, how are your feet? Now, the super spiritual amongst you will realize that I'm not talking about your physical feet. I'm talking about the beautiful feet that go to preach the gospel. And we read that in Isaiah 52, verse 7. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, and that is also to be found in the book of Nahum, chapter 1 and verse 15. Okay, let's read from the text today, which is from Romans, chapter 10, starting at verse 9. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? Amen? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, as Rogers rightly pointed out, we've been looking at the subject of listening to and hearing from the Lord speaking to us. Today, we are looking at how others can hear the good news and our part in preaching or telling others who do not know the Lord how they too can believe and trust in the Lord for their salvation and have eternal life. All of us are potentially the bearers of good news. We shouldn't keep it to ourselves. The world is desperate for good news, for hope and meaning to life. And it's our responsibility as servants of Christ to proclaim or speak out the good news. So what is that good news then? We read in Romans 10, in verse 13, or we read in Romans 10, verse 13, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
quoting from Joel 2, verse 32. How simple and straightforward is that? It's all you have to do. No other penances you have to go through, flagellations and all sorts of things that people used to do in the Middle Ages. Some people think that they have to do that now. But our salvation is based not on what we do or how good we are. You know, people think, don't they? You come across people who think, oh, you know, I've lived, I live a good life. I, I've never sinned. I don't quite know how that works out, but never mind. People think that by keeping to the law and being good people, they will be okay imagining that if they are good enough, they will be okay, they will get to heaven. No. Salvation is purely as a result of the grace of God. Romans 10, verse 14, which we read, underlines the crucial role of evangelism. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? This question was central to Paul's life and that should produce in us the desire to share the good news with unbelieving friends, colleagues and anyone willing to listen. This is the result of our salvation. It's not a condition of it, but it's the result of it. If we truly believe in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, that will produce in us the desire to share that good news with other people. People won't hear the gospel unless it is preached to them. As Jesus ascended to heaven after his resurrection, he told his disciples in the words of the Great Commission. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely... I am with you to the very end of the age. Jesus has not left us together on alone with it. He get, has given us the power and help of his Holy Spirit. And by the power and help of the Holy Spirit, we will tell others about Jesus and our faith in him. Roger pointed out actually that we um, as a choir joining with the Absolute Gospel Company Choir in Tunbridge performing a musical called The Book of Life featuring the choir, soloists, drama, dance and audiovisual effects. It tells the biblical truth in an entertaining and challenging way. The performances will be in Tunbridge at the end of May and there are flyers about it in the entrance corridor here. As Roy Etherton, along with his wife Jenny, who wrote and composed the musical, has pointed out to us, it is not meant to be purely entertainment. Having said that, looking at some of the male members of our uh, church choir, you might think that uh, there's a bit of entertainment going on there, isn't it? Right, David. <laughs> but it is primarily a gospel outreach. That's what we're doing. We're not purely entertaining. We're preaching the gospel in song. The company seeks to equip Christians with good, sound Bible teaching to help them understand why things are happening and to point them and others to the hope that is in Jesus 
the Messiah. Calling on the name of Jesus involves not merely stating his name, but turning to Christ in faith. We see from this chapter that Paul is frustrated that his fellow Jews rejected Christ and sought to earn salvation through adherence to the law. Read that in the first three verses of chapter 10 of Romans. This underlines the importance of his work for his compatriots to embrace faith in Christ. They must hear about him. And that is a task entrusted to preachers. It's not just somebody in front talking to a few people or to an auditorium of thousands. No, we are all preachers of the word. We need to share our faith with friends and family. You see, the gospel which means good news, must be given to those who have not heard, because the gospel has the potential to alter the eternal destiny of its hearers. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. It's Romans 1, verses 16 to 17, i.e. it's not by works alone. None can be saved without the gospel, and none can know about the righteousness of God without the gospel, the good news being preached to them. There must be preachers, missionaries and others sent out from among those who know and live the faith in Christ. You may not preach out in front, but you can talk to others about your faith in Christ. What would we do if we see somebody in danger? We see a child drowning. We see someone in danger, stepping out into the road in front of a car. Will we just watch and idly, idly watch by? Or would we take some steps to warn that person or that child about the danger they were in? And you know, that's the same, isn't it, with our friends and relatives who do not know Christ. If we don't warn them about the consequences of their disobedience, then their blood is on by our hands, is it not? That's putting it fairly bluntly. That's a challenge to me. Do I really love and care for my fellow people who do not know Christ enough to, to warn them? about these things. Our job is to tell others about the free offer of the good news of salvation, not to force our beliefs on them or to make them into Christians. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in their hearts alone but we need to give them the good news of the gospel so that they can make their own mind up and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Every Christian is called to fulfill the Great Commission regardless of our location, job description or income. Unfortunately, evangelism in our modern world is very often, and in some countries, considered a crime. Even among Christians, the prevalent pluralistic worldview makes many wonder if evangelism is necessary or even more. After all, there are decent people in other belief systems, aren't there? Including atheism. 
but the gospel is not about decent people going to heaven. Rather, the gospel is about God transforming the lives of sinful people. But we must evangelize with gentleness and respect. In 1 Peter 3, verse 15 to 16, it says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Paul says again, using attractive speech in Colossians 4, verse 6, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone, acknowledging that God is at work to draw people to Christ. Jesus said, as recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 32, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. We are to be like Christ to other people. I remember hearing, and I've probably told you this before, and you've probably heard it from other people before, uh, there was a, a man who was involved in open-air preaching, you now call it street evangelism, handing out tracts to passers-by and asking if they'd like to come to the church for an evangelistic event. And it must have been that this chap's demeanour didn't quite match his message. And as he approached one man coming towards him, he asked, he asked this man if he would like to come uh, to a preaching that evening. Man looked at him and said, no thanks mate, I've got enough trouble as my own. <laughs> A lost world must hear the good news about Jesus, but no one will hear without a preacher. Beautiful feet. You don't want to smell mine at the moment. <laughs> I think we, we go on to the next slide, please. Thank you. Are you ready to bring the message of good news? The message of peace to a troubled world. We have the message of peace with God. Now I came across, yeah, are you ready to go? Yeah, absolutely, thank you for that. Are you ready to go to respond to the word of God? So the next slide, please, if that's okay. Yeah, that's the one. I came, uh, you, you know about right now media, don't you? And uh, uh, there's lots of, really helpful stuff in there and as we said last week it's, we have this remarkable facility to help us uh, uh, lots of videos and books and other stuff to help us and I, I've very much found it helpful and I came across this uh, under this subject four reasons for the church and us to preach the good news of the gospel. Four perspectives, if you like. Firstly, the command from above, and we've mentioned that before, but in Mark's gospel, chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So that's the command from above. Then we have this rather strange uh, uh, passage from Luke chapter 16, which I will read at the moment. And this is a perspective of a command from below. Verse 
verse 19, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. So that's a perspective of a command from below. It may be, it's an allegorical story, but it shows that once a person has passed from this life, there is no further uh, uh, opportunity for that person to come to know the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. We need to understand that, the urgency of the time that we are in. And then we have a command from without. Acts chapter 16, verse 9. We have this vision which appeared to the Apostle Paul from a man in Macedonia to come and help them with the message of the gospel. Paul concluded that God wanted them to preach the gospel there. So that's a command from without. And then finally, a command from within. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14, Paul says that Christ's love compels us to preach the gospel to others. The command comes from within us the result of our relationship in Christ, that because of all he has done for us, this compels us or motivates us to go and share the good news. Are you ready to go? Make those feet beautiful and share the good news. No, I'm going to be accused by my wife of taking far too long, so that is the end of the lesson. <laughs> but, <laughs> settle back in your seats, because uh, in the remaining time, and I will surely incur the wrath of my wife, we are going to look at some of the uh, things that we've been up to, uh, the good news for everyone. John and I are members of Good News for Everyone, which used to be called Gideons. So we've got a new name. What motivates us to tell others the good news of the Lord Jesus? That is Christ's love which compels us. The aims of good news for everyone. 
Good news for everyone serves to introduce others to the Lord Jesus Christ by the placing, presenting, or distributing scriptures in many different areas of life, most often testaments, which include the New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs, but also copies of the full Bible. But it's not just Bibles being presented in hotels, but giving out God's word in the main traffic lanes of life and wherever people are, so that they have the opportunity to read God's guidebook for their lives and the best-selling book in the world today. What makes the good news for Bible, uh, what makes the good news for everyone Bible different? Well, at the front you have uh, um, places to help you look into the Bible to find something that will help you in the circumstances of life that you come up against. Have you ever been angry? Have you ever been afraid? Have you been bereaved? Well, you can look at the front of the Bible and it will tell you, show you a passage of scripture which will help you. There's a, a piece at the beginning about the guidance, what the Bible says about itself and a daily Bible reading um, uh, program. Why do we do it? We do it so that people can find the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's that? Hercule Poirot, played by David Jason. Thank you, you're awake. It's good. played by David Suchet. Now, David Suchet came to faith in Christ through reading Romans 8 in the Gideon's Bible in a hotel back in 1986. Since then, he's made an audio recording of the entire New International Version of the Bible, which was re released in April 2014. If you download the Holy Bible, uh, you will actually be able to hear him uh, reading it. He's got a wonderful way of reading and bringing the scripture to life. And that was all because of a Bible that he came across in a hotel and he came to faith in Christ. In the past few years, we have placed Bibles in the winter shelter in Maidstone, Maidstone Hospital, Kim's and Priority House. Though now since the infection problems in hospitals and particularly since COVID, we're not able, at least in Maidstone Hospital, to place Bibles as we used to in bedside lockers because of infection risks. They are now only in the chapels and can be uh, shared uh, by chaplains. We've also given uh, Bibles and Testaments to the Adolescent Hospital just outside Staples near Iden Manor Care Home. If you actually go out of uh, Staples on the left-hand side, on the way to Iden Manor Care Home, there is the Adolescent Hospital. And I had an uh, amazing conversation with John Ojo, who is the chaplain there. He's only there one day a week. Uh, but he's a wonderful, delightful chap. And um, so we were able to uh, give him uh, Bibles and Testaments and so on that he can use in um, helping the young people that are there.
October, we went to St. Simon Stock Catholic School. I have to say that that school is a very strong Christian ethos. Their mission and motto, work with love, service through spiritual values of hope, faith and charity, and the academic virtues of attainment, appreciation and reflection. We helped the school by presenting 180 New Testaments there. And we went to the relatively new School of Science and Technology in Newcut Road, Maidstone, on the 5th of December. Um, 190 testaments were handed to Year 7 students. They were very attentive pupils and very supportive staff. Just before Christmas, we went to Aylesford School. Again, very attentive pupils and very supportive staff. Paul Clements, uh, a retired teacher formerly at Oakwood Grammar, and I took nine year seven classes at Cornwallis between 22nd and 31st of January. We showed them a PowerPoint on the, on the Bible and also a video of a modern retelling of the story uh, of the, in the Bible of the prodigal son in Luke 15, produced by Saltmine. The pupils asked some really interesting questions, <laughs> some quite challenging. Nearly all 240 students took New Testaments made available to them at the end of the lessons. Three members of the teaching staff in religious education, I think it's sociology, uh, were extremely supportive and evidently of deep Christian faith. And they were enthusiastic about our involvement. We went there to do the same similar thing last year and we've been invited back next year uh, as well. What was actually quite surprising uh, to us and really encouraging was that we received over 50 thank you cards written voluntarily the following week. And there's one of the examples. And I remember that girl, she kept putting her hand up about seven times. She asked seven or eight different questions. Hello, I am the preteen little girl who constantly took the courage to put her hand up and ask complicated questions. I enjoyed your visit and I've appreciated such a tiny but huge gift from you. I learnt that words do not just come as, as words, as wise from a quote, yet I opened my eyes to realize that God, Jesus, is 100% more wiser and amazingly inspirational, knowing that his words have been going on more than decades she meant through uh, good news for everyone, uh, is a huge wowser for me. So thank you. And I, I could read a lot of other um, uh, cards of appreciation, but time doesn't permit me, and I'll be in trouble again with Judith, so I'll, I'll not say anything more about that. We c um, then we went to uh, Sutton Valance School, uh, 135 testaments were given to years seven and eight, as we didn't do it last year. At a great time there, uh, lovely chapel building, and again, uh, the uh, uh, teacher that uh, that helped helped us, uh, and the uh, and the pupils there were very attentive. Um, Saint Augustine's Academy. Just before Easter, we visited this overtly Christian foundation school. It's a Wood Woodard School's Academy, Aca Academy, get my words right, Trust School. 170 students. 
One class stood to recite the school prayer in unison, which goes like this, Almighty God, who says that um, uh, assemblies are dead in schools today. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and for giving us another opportunity to learn new things. Bless everyone at St. Augustine Academy so we may know the knowledge of your love, truth, wisdom and peace. Help us to be courageous in all of our endeavours. Teach us to be compassionate when interacting with others. Create in us a community where everyone is treated with charity, kindness, dignity and respect. Thank you for making us one family under you. Amen. We continue to try to regain access to other Maidstones area schools, particularly Maidstone Boys Grammar, who have so far said no to us, but also MGGS, Oakwood Grammar, Mapleston Noakes, New Line Learning, Lenham School, Valley Park and Invicta School. Please pray that we will be able to get into these schools to share the Bible with them once again. So, if we can't now visit so many senior schools, we have turned our attention to primary schools, particularly Church of England schools, who we know are receptive to us. We had the wonderful opportunity to visit Yalding Church of England School at the invitation of Sarah Friend, ex Stapler School, some of you may remember, who con contacted our head office for free Bibles. She was somewhat surprised when I responded. She hadn't quite made the connection. But she seemed enthusiastic nonetheless. So Paul and I went there and took the afternoon lesson from 10 past 1 to 3 o'clock. Quite a, a lengthy session and I'm not used to teaching students, pupils at that age. But we had a good time. 24 year 6 pupils, very well behaved and attentive to the story of Easter. We went through why Good Friday is called Good Friday. And that was followed by a lengthy Q&A session. Again, some very challenging questions there. They were given New Testaments and the Discover magazine. Now, the Discover magazine is particularly aimed at um, years five and six pupils. It contains Bible stories and activities for young people to do and they were very pleased uh, to receive, receive these and they will use them in their lessons. Uh, th this book actually, this magazine is, uh, it contains Bible quotations and illustrations by RE advisor Lat Blaylock, editor of RE Today magazine and projects office of NATRA, National Association of Teachers of RE. Well, we do hope to go to Staples Primary School later on in the year and I will be contacting the school and uh, liaising with Peter and Silke and Andrew as to how we can do that. Uh, we'll leave the, the, the last video out. Um, last year in July, we uh, shared a stand with Farming Christian Link uh, at the Kent Show. Uh, we have another opportunity in uh, July to do, the, to, to do the same. So if you're around at that time, you'd like to come and see what we get up to there. We had the opportunity, a wonderful opportunity to give out Bibles and Christian literature to passers-by. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your support, both individuals and as a church. So join the Beautiful Feast Army in proclaiming the gospel, both as individuals and as a church. As the worship group come up now to lead us in singing the final song, let's pray together. And if somebody would like to alert the children's activities that we're finishing now, and can come and join us in our final song or songs, then please do that.
Let's pray. Lord our God, please help us as we share the gospel message with our friends and relatives and anyone who will listen to us. Amen. <laughs>